Now at this point, you might be asking, look, so what? Do we really need to do all this work with differential forms in higher dimensions? Are these, are these really good for anything? Do they have any meaning? Well, let's think. Let's see an example where differential forms are really useful in the context of data. This is something that I have wanted to show you for so long. Let's think back. Let's think way back to the interlude of volume one, where we introduced a fun little example involving time series data signals that evolve over time. And recall that if you have n of these, x1, x2, x3, all the way up through xn, then together these signals define a curve in the Euclidean n-dimensional space of outputs, a curve that's parametrized by time. Now, that's fun, but what are we going to do with that? Here's a simplified setting with a cool problem. Let's say that you have two sine waves periodic waves, same amplitude, same period, but they're a little bit out of phase. Let's call these x1 and x2. Now, one thing that you might care about is determining that phase, figuring out which is the leading signal and which is the lagging signal. You hear that terminology in, say, economic data all the time. Well, there are lots of ways to do this for sine waves, but here's one that connects to things that we've thought about. Let's plot these two signals, x1 and x2, in the plane as a function of time and see what kind of curves we get. So what I'm going to do is plot a couple of different examples where the curves have different phases between them. And what you're seeing is the evolution over time, but also this plot, this curve in the x1, x2 plane. Now, in the case where these signals are perfectly in phase or perfectly out of phase, then the curve that gets traced out in the x1, x2 plane is just a straight line, either slope plus one or slope minus one. It's as if they're perfectly correlated or perfectly anti-correlated signals. But if they're not perfectly in or out of phase, if one is unambiguously leading the other, then what you're getting is an ellipse that is traced out in the plane. An ellipse either moving around clockwise or counterclockwise. And that orientation is telling you something about leadership. If you plot those signals, x1 of t and x2 of t, in the x1, x2 plane and look at the region D that they trace out, this ellipse, then the oriented area of D is measured by the two-form dx1 wedge dx2. If you integrate that basis two-form over this domain D in the plane, then this is telling you about leadership. If that integral is positive, then that means that x1 leads x2. It's slightly ahead of it. Whereas if that oriented area, the integral of that two form is negative, then that means that x2 is ahead and x1 is behind. And if that integral is zero or close to zero, then that means that they're close to being perfectly in phase or perfectly out of phase. Okay, now what happens if instead of two signals, you have three signals, four signals, n signals? You can repeat the same analysis. Let's say that we have multiple sine waves. Then what we're going to get is multiple ellipses in the different coordinate planes. If I focus on the ith and the jth time series, plot the curve in the xi xj plane that is traced out by time t and then integrate the basis to form dxi wedge dxj over that region in the xi xj plane then that's telling me something about leadership xi is going to lead xj when that integral is positive and xi is going to lag behind xj when that integral is negative and you have to compute these for all combinations all pairs i and j so in the example that we see here x1 lags x2 by a lot x1 lags x3 by a lot but x2 leads x3 by just a little bit Computing those three integrals, looking at those three oriented areas, 
helps us figure out the exact order x2, x3, x1. Now, this is really good motivation for thinking about differential forms in higher dimensions. If we've got n such periodic time series, then we want to work in the n-dimensional space with coordinates x1, x2, all the way up through xn. And what we care about is integrating the basis two forms, dxi wedge dxj, over certain regions in the xi, xj plane. Now, understanding uh, that motivation it raises a whole bunch of questions. Could we integrate these two forms in n-dimensional space? Could we use something like Green's theorem, Gauss theorem, Stokes theorem, anything like that? Does that even work? Would it be helpful in this context? There are so many other questions. What happens if we have more complicated signals, things that aren't just sines or cosines, but uh, really complicated, rich signals, the kinds of things you would find in practice. Well, these are going to trace out really weird regions in the xi, xj plane. What does it mean to integrate a two-form over something like that? What happens if we, instead of having continuous time signals, have discrete time signals? All kinds of questions crop up in order to answer them. We're going to need more tools. We're going to need calculus, calculus for differential forms in dimensions higher than three. And that's what comes next.